thing I want to get to is, you know, that I noticed throughout your career, you were always out in the community, whether it was going to different like preschools and, and reading to kids. What made you, you know, decide to do that? You ended up even winning an award for it um, from Conference USA. But what, what ended up making you, you know, decide to, to be in the community, you know, almost on a weekly basis during the season or outside of the season? Um, just there's, there was a point in my time at Memphis to where it's like, you know, there's a saying, I, I don't know it exactly, but like children are the future or youth are, you know, there's the better generate or they are the future, they mold the future, whatever. I don't know word for word, but I mean, there's so much truth behind it because when you have something or when you, when you build something or when you leave something behind or the word inheritance, you know, that, it, it, you know, theoretically inheritance is something that somebody left for the younger generation to take care of. I don't care if it's money. I don't care if it's a business. I don't care if you, the world hopscotch champion, I don't care what it is. If you, if you find pride in that, or if you see pride in that, you're going to pass it down to the next person for them to take care of it. And I feel like every single person or every single child has something to live for, whether they know it or not. You know, I got a buddy named uh, Speedy that's down in uh, New Orleans, and he started a nonprofit called University Enterprises. And his motto is, if it matters, you matter. So I feel like there's enough space in this universe, there's enough space in this world for every individual person or child to have a dream and, and to be able to chase it. You know, some, some, some may, some, some, a dream for some people may be able to make, may, may be to get out of their, their hometown or, or get out of their poverty stricken neighborhood. And some goal may be on the opposite end. It may be a, a, a goal for somebody to, to, to start and run a fortune 500 company. Yeah. Goal for me is to be able to get these kids to find a happy medium in whatever they're doing to be able to chase their goals or chase their dreams. And I think there's enough room for everybody to do that, whether you're doing it alone or if you're running that path with somebody that, 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 that's like-minded as you. I feel like everybody has the ability to do that because everybody deserves it. And, you know, that, and, and that's, you know, as far as kids go, but just being in a community with other people, you never know what somebody's going through. And, and personalities can be very infectious. Um, to this day, she never, she never, she never, for, she, she never forgets to remind me. And I'll just see her out in public every now and then. I, I totally forget her name. But I was leaving study hall one day, um, Wilder Tower at the time. And I saw some, I saw two ladies driving around. And you can just tell, just context clues. You can just tell they were looking around, looking for parking. And so it was a young, it was a lady and her daughter. She was assigned or she was, uh, you know, signing up or she was applying to come to the University of Memphis. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you looking for a parking spot? And like, yeah, yeah. And so I literally block all of traffic, go to my car, tell her to pull up right behind me so she could have my spot so I could leave. So they're both, wow. you know, old, their daughter's grown now. And every time I see them out and about, it's like, hey, will you remember us? You, you saved your parking spot for us. So people remember stuff like that. People don't remember what you say to them. People remember how you make them feel. Mm -hmm. And my plan is to make sure everybody feels some type of love or some type of respect or any kind of feeling to keep them fired up, to keep them going. Yeah, and that really relates to a lot of the stuff you've talked about in your, I guess, like Instagram kind of series, 10 more. I mean, you're wearing the hoodie right now. Can you kind of talk a little bit about that and, and how that all started, because I've loved, you know, watching all the stuff, whether it's, you know, talking about being vulnerable or um, you never know what someone else is going through, because it's really powerful stuff. So uh, talk to me a little bit about that. Um, Ten more started. It started, it, it started something fitness related. It, it was very, it was very fitness oriented. Um. And so 10 more really came from like, because I, I used to love, I mean, I still love fitness personally. I love working out. I love fitness. And I used to love it for other people. But from being honest, there's a very, very, very small community in Memphis that likes to work out. Very small. Um, 
And even smaller than that, I wish I, I wish you could do numbers on this, but I don't even think it's possible. And out of that small community, there's an even smaller community that works out to actually be healthy and look good. Majority of people work out just so they can eat how they want or do what they want, ultimately not seeing any results really. But like I found when I thought I loved fitness for other people, 10 more was a, you know, if I'm the instructor and I'm asking you to do 10 push-ups, I need to be able to do 10 more. If I'm asking you to run 10 miles, I need to be able to run 10 more. Because as a leader, that's or, or so I thought, you know, the stuff that I was going through at the time or the places that I was working, it just, the leadership wasn't there. You know, they weren't leading by example. But as time went on and I used to, you know, and I began to talk to my mother about it. And I used to tell her how I felt about 10 more, what I thought I wanted it to be. And she looked and she, you know, looked at me and told me, she's like, son, that's kind of selfish. I'm like, what are you talking about? That sounds great. She's like, no, you sound really stupid, actually. That's really selfish. She's like, what? And she was like, just because you want to run around with a six pack and raging biceps and huge shoulders, that doesn't mean Jane Doe or John Doe wants to do the same thing. You know, what if somebody coming to your workout class just because they had a bad day and they need to release some steam? What if somebody coming to your workout class because they're extremely depressed and they find clarity when they come take one of your fitness classes? So they intend more began to shift more so into a mindset thing. Um, you know, 10 more minutes, 10 more push-ups, 10 more hugs, 10 more letters, 10 more phone calls, whatever it may be. And I feel like within that, you have to be able to find your why. Because every, everybody has a why, you know, everybody has a brick wall that they think they hit. But like at the end of the day, if you wake up, regardless if you, you know, if you're doing fitness or, you know, if you're doing a podcast, you may let you, you may know why you're doing your podcast, but why? Finding the why to your why is more important. You know, that mental aspect of anything you're doing, because I can easily say, I want to get up and work out because I want to look good. Well, why? Why do you want to work out and look good? Because, you know, the attention you get, because you want to be healthy, because the comments you get, because it, whatever your why is, whatever keeps you fired up, there's always that one last final straw that I feel like everybody has. And once you be able to tap into that, I feel like anybody can be unstoppable. And I want to help people, you know, understand that or realize that from so many different aspects, from, from an athlete, from a friend, a husband, a father, a wife, whatever it may be, um, that's, I, I think people all have something that drives them and gets them fired up. And I think, you know, helping people find that and tap into it, I think a, a lot of change can be done there.